Hello and welcome to First Geek 411. This is episode 135, and I'm Cameron Franklin, your host. With me, as always, is my best man, Chris Nicolay. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm happy that worked out as well as I was hoping. Yeah, great job on that intro. <laughs> then with us, as I guess most of the time, is Emma. How are you doing today, Emma? Pretty good. No complaints. And then the hoot and howl, Shanine, how are you? Good. Very hot. Oh, no. We finally got summer up here, so. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start watering the lawn now because it's so dry. It's cooling off in Texas. It, it's a nice balmy, like, 92 today. Ah, uh, nice. nice and not hot at all. <laughs> oh, so you're telling me it's hotter here than it is there right now montana be crazy yeah it's so hot <laughs> we're I'm really listening. excited listeners that you could be here with us on this journey to 135 i gotta just say i believe and we're hoping and so we are live on twitch and then you can also of course still find us at our normal locations whether that's our social media at one geek 411 on Facebook, Twitter, PlayStation community, in our Discord server, at our email, which is 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. And like we said, live on Twitch, Monday nights, around 7.15 Mountain Time. Got it right this time. Didn't mess it up. Proud of me. Yeah, we don't have to wait another hour. Yes. <laughs> Mistakes were made. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then, of course, the podcast audio can be found later. Um, on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And then you can find our show notes at our website, onegeek411.com. This week, we got some Witcher news. We're going to chat about Kickstarter and then some music that just dropped and then get to know the hosts a little bit and do our top three sitcom duos. But before we get into that, let's find out what we've all been up to this week. Um, Emma. Why don't you go first since you're at the top of the show notes? Sure. So as two of my fellow hosts will probably mention, uh, last night I had the honor of being on uh, another podcast and we got to talk about um, MCU and phase two with Comics and the Cross and it was fabulous and a total blast and I just really enjoyed it. It was the first time I've gone back to phase two in a while and the day before yesterday my favorite band switchfoot had a live stream concert for a lot of their fans and that was a lot of fun to just watch while i was eating dinner and yeah dang they're still around yeah they are still around <laughs> they are going strong and kicking shanine what have you been up to this past week um, not a whole lot, but I had a couple of coffee dates with friends, which was really nice to get out of the house and sit in a park and talk with real people face to face. Mm -hmm. And then one day, Taylor Swift just tweets out of nowhere that she's dropping an entire album at midnight and the whole world exploded. And it was amazing. I just, I had so much fun. Everyone was like, I think every other tweet, if not every single tweet was about Taylor Swift. And everyone was just talking about her and her music and all their memories around Taylor Swift like all day. And then everyone listened to like the same album at midnight, which was luckily only like 10 o'clock for me. So <laughs> See. that was nice. <laughs> I thought during that time that everyone was just really into folklore out of nowhere. Like I thought maybe there's like a new TV <laughs> series or something. I'm like, why is everyone Bam. talking about folklore? <laughs> like, is this new podcast that just like taken off or something? Cause I'll listen to it if it's about folklore. Like, <laughs> but no, had to be Taylor Swift, which I'm equally okay with. Yeah. Same here. But I have a little mm -hmm. trivia question for you guys relating to this. Okay. So what, four media formats did she release this album on? 
I really hope one's cassette. So obviously digital. <laughs> the correct format. Yep. CDs. Vinyl. Like eight different vinyl options, actually, or something like that. Yeah, they're collector's editions. Um, and as Cameron was hoping, cassette. She good. has. She released it on cassette. Wow. You can, you can <laughs> order folklore on cassette. Yes. Nothing beats that the good most, old cassette sound. The most obscure piece of technology to go back to. <laughs> I mean, she's Taylor Swift. She can do whatever she wants. So, yeah. I, I just want, like, what, what, who out there is listening to cassettes? People who have really old cars. <laughs> and isn't there, like, cassettes like on the rise again for some reason like it's like the nostalgia thing i think i've heard like there's there's certain things like about like certain aspects about cassettes like i don't know like people are really into lo-fi i guess is low fidelity um audio is kind of a thing now i guess but still <laughs> just add a filter <laughs> to your digital music <laughs> also where do you find a cassette player the internet really old cars you have to buy an old car. yeah <laughs> really old cars are deep down the internet rabbit hole like also, vinyl honest, churches that too like most churches still have like we did a murder mystery once and we needed a cassette player for the murder mystery and sure enough the church had one so we just like pinged the guy that was doing the children's ministry and then we were like hey do we still have one like they didn't use it but they still had it and so we just went and grabbed yeah. the cassette player man yeah, that's it, it. Still, just why? Like vinyl, I get. Vinyl <laughs> is just classic. Fun. I guess everyone, or in chat, apparently everyone's just trying to be like Star Lord. Uh, Star Lord, uh, is, yeah. <laughs> that's what gotta do. Uh, Shanine, did you have a favorite song off folklore? I really loved Exile because I love Bonnie Bear. Mm. That was a good one. Chris, what have you been up to this past week? Um, setting this up. Proud that, of you. That's been my primary goal. I've been working on, so you'll notice, if you ha ever visit any of our things, you'll notice a new logo, um, which we are officially, the official debut is this, is our stream today. Um, but I started uploading it everywhere as soon as, because I got anxious. I was like, I'm going to forget <laughs> something, and then it's not going to be up in time. Um and so you'll see that uh, we are officially have graphics up on the stream for compared to our test um, segment last week. And we're working, I'm doing some updates on the website. So I've been doing a lot of, uh, I guess I've been watching a lot of YouTube for trying to get a better at more ideas and what to program onto the website. Um, but that will come later. Also, I did watch because it came out, it is officially on Amazon Prime, um, Guns Akimbo which is the Daniel Radcliffe movie that came out in 2019. Um, you, and you've all this. seen the, the picture of Daniel Radcliffe with pistols and a bathrobe and the, the footy. That's this movie. Um, it's, it's bloody and gory and definitely not for everyone. Um, but it was, it was definitely entertaining. It, it plays off the kind of, by viral like it's one of those themes of the um on going on viral online by doing really dumb stuff or a network that it, essentially it's setting up people to hunt each other um and it's, it's not good but it's not terrible it's this is fun um other than that i also had to take time because also we are we're on comics and and the cross uh yesterday and so i had to catch up on rewatching some marvel phase two so i knew what i was talking about very yeah, important that's about it yeah. that's and i guess that brings us to me so basically i did the things that everyone did i was on comics and the cross um so i finished my rewatch of phase two i'd done all but the last two last week and so this week was age of ultron and ant-man 
Um, and then listen to folklore. Um, I listened to the next day when it dropped. I just like listened like first thing in the morning and I just put it on. Um, my favorite song, I think, is Last Great American Dynasty. Um, but I, I'd need to go back and do another listen um, to kind of like finalize how I feel about at least like my first take of it. I meant to do that before the podcast and forgot. Um, but yeah, so Last Great American Dynasty. Um, I am like two thirds of the way through the collectibles in The Last of Us Part Two. So I'm um, just got a, a couple more chapters to knock out and then I'll be done with that and I'll start New Game Plus. And then I played a lot of MTG Arena, lots of magic, um, got a bunch of wins and I ended up two points higher in rank than when I started. So I got basically nowhere. So Hey, two was, points was, is two points. Yeah, yeah. It was riveting. <laughs> Probably better than I would. Just get on there, get your one win, Emma. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, we'll work on it. Getting there, getting there. It is free. (laughs) Fair enough. And so that pretty much brings us through what we've been up to. Oh, and I'll throw a link to the video on Comic and the Cross's YouTube in our show notes. um, So that'll be there for everyone um, if people want to go back. It's a pretty long conversation. It's like two hours and 40 minutes, basically. Yeah. Um, but Lots of opinions. Of yes, I have, <laughs> a, I have an Iron Man three hot take. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it was a ton of fun. Really appreciate um, the opportunity to come and be a part of that. Um, and so that brings us into our show proper, um, as we are testing out this new format for all four of us, um, where we each are bringing pretty much some sort of discussion topic or some news that stands out, and then we're going to just kind of chat about what is going on. Um, And so let's just keep with the same pattern. Emma, why don't you go first? Great. So as I saw personally on Twitter this morning, it was just announced that a new Witcher series will be coming to Netflix, and it's a prequel six-parter to the, I guess we could call it the main series now, that happens about 1200 years before the events of the main series. And it dives into basically the first Witcher and what he or she did in their life as the first Witcher after uh, all of the magic and elves and humans do all their fighting because that's just the thing that happens. And it's called the Witcher Blood Origin. And I just thought that was exciting to bring to the table. And if, like, I don't know if it'll be good or not, because we just heard about it this morning. But I'm pretty excited, and I hope it'll be as good as the main series. Have we all watched The Witcher? Duh. <laughs> yes. Just wanted to check. I'll just so, speak for everyone. <laughs> this, yes. is, yeah, this is my hype news. Like, <laughs> Like when I saw you'd put this in the show notes, I was like, yes, <laughs> the Witcher series is so good. And I'm so, absolutely, like, I'm just so happy to be getting more of it. Like, of course, yeah. like, we'll hopefully get season two at some point, but like, I'm just so happy to have more of that. I'm like, excited for elves because I, because elves. Elves are cool. That's, that's like your life, Chris. <laughs> it's just my default. <laughs> <laughs> Not the worst default to have. And not like those tiny elves, like actual elves. Like Lord of the Rings elves instead of like Santa's helpers. Yeah, no <laughs> no Keeblers. Yeah. <laughs> none, of those, none of that Keebler stuff. Yeah, like... Or even Harry Potter did elves dirty. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, they really enough. did. We just got the house elves. Yeah. yeah. Shh. None of that. Lame. <laughs> And then a point of question. So we recently saw what Xbox, some of the games that Xbox will be offering for its next gen console. And now that we've seen uh, both games for Xbox and PS5, is there any series or game that any of you is excited for, for either next gen console? Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. Part (laughs) 2? Duh. (laughs) um, I mean, mean, Horizon Zero Dawn, for sure. Duh. (laughs) Um, 
I don't know. I, there's there's so much anymore um, that I just can't wait to see what next gen has in store. I mean, uh, Spider Man, Miles Morales. Um, granted, I'm just hyping a lot of Sony stuff, but that's because that's what I'm excited <laughs> for, um, and it's what I'm going to be getting like right away. Uh, Xbox has some cool stuff coming though. Like from their most recent event, I haven't fully divot uh, like dove into it, but like they they their their timing on this event couldn't have been better. <laughs> yeah, seriously. What about you, Shani? I don't know. I don't follow enough. Usually, whatever my husband is excited about. <laughs> Fair enough. I did enjoy watching him play through the first Final Fantasy VII remake, so I'm excited for part two of that one. <sighs> so good. So I who's your favorite always... Final Fantasy VII character, Shanine? Um, I like Tifa. Given that I've never played a single Final Fantasy game, I wouldn't know. But... You have a PS4. You better play Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm getting <laughs> around to it. There's lots of games on my list. I will send you the physical <laughs> copy that I had to buy because I wanted the steel book, and Great. ended up downloading digitally so I could yeah. play it at 10, at 10 p.m. on yeah, Thursday Chris's night. physical copy didn't get there quick enough. Great. So, I will so send you the my digital. address, and you're welcome to send it to me. <laughs> you can play it. Done. <laughs> I gotta finish The Last of Us 2 first, though. Yeah, you do. Meh. So, <laughs> so what are you looking forward to? Horizon Zero Dawn, because that's my game, <laughs> just in general. Um, so I'm super excited about uh, the second one coming out. Um, but in general, I'm just excited for like all of the new games. I watched the PS5 event um when they announced a bunch of their games and a lot of them look super fantastic so i'm just pumped in general um yeah for me i'm kind of just echoing exactly what y'all have already said um spider, spider man miles morales super excited um, i'm excited that miles is getting his own game mm -hmm. um and i'm hoping that this really sets us up for spider-man two having like actually having miles as an established spider-man alongside peter parker um just because like i think that that would be a departure for like from like traditional like miles morales story and it'd be really cool to see peter like help train miles and then kind of hand the mantle over to some degree um so i'm really excited about that horizon um that was probably one of my favorite games of generation. So the fact mm -hmm. that we're getting a sequel um, is extremely exciting. Um, I like the more like Eastern aesthetic that they seem to be going for. Yeah. Cause there's like a Chinese style dragon. Um, and so like, that's really cool. Um, what else from, from the Xbox side, like Halo and Fable both look really fun. Oh, like, that's right. Fable. <laughs> well, I guess I have to say Halo looks, or to say Fable looks fun. The trailer is funny, and like we don't, we didn't see gameplay or anything like that. But the I trailer mean, itself true. is pretty funny. Is this like so, a known new Fable, or is this just a remake? I because I'm down for either or. Because the Fable series is phenomenal too. Yeah. Granted, well, the first two. I don't know if there's any others, but. I do not know specifics. I think it is a new one. I'm down. Um, I'm down. And then third party wise, really excited for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm -hmm. Of the like six open world games that we have coming out like this fall, like that's probably the one I'll end up getting. And so I'm really excited for the Norse mythology theme. Yeah. We're going to wreck some people as Vikings. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited for the educational aspect. <laughs> <laughs> this is how ships worked. 
they sailed. <laughs> How educationally accurate do you think it'll really be? No, just like they did with the, uh, they'll, they'll likely have like the, you can explore the research aspect that they put into their games. Okay. So like all the actual like, pieces and how they actually seek to make them at least historically accurate in terms of the research and like the scenery and everything and all that's a bit they typically after they release the game they they release a a piece where you uh, or a game mode where you can go and explore the city and actually explore certain aspects of the history of the area oh that's cool it's really cool. one of my favorite assassin's creed memes is how the crossbow was taken out of Assassin's Creed 1 because it wasn't invented until after the game came out. <laughs> and then now you're fighting like anything. Like there's just no grounding in the series anymore. And it's just like, ah, you just do whatever. No big deal, which I'm excited for. Yeah. So, Shanine, what do you got for us this week? Okay. Well, my week largely revolved around Taylor Swift. So what is a release that you guys have gotten super excited for, music or otherwise? And part two of that question is what's something that you've been able to get pumped about with a large population? So I can go first on this one. So I'm not really into music. Like, like that's just one of those things that Me, you switched spots. <laughs> huh? Yeah, me too. Well, no, I'm talking like on the stream, like the official, your official yeah. spots on my screen. Changed. I am now Shanine. Oh. Yep. Oh. And Shanine is now me. <laughs> we back. We back. <laughs> Listeners, thank you so much. A little bit of technical difficulties on this stream. We, I what we the just audio gotta believe. Be like, oops. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> We might, the audio format might be a little off this week. We are we apologize for that as a result too. <laughs> but with that, let's go ahead and jump into what somebody else thinks on that. Um, Chris, do you want to share? Someone's gotten you super excited. I didn't even hear yours. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> unfortunately, he was otherwise preoccupied. Yeah. Chris was a little busy. I was a little busy um, trying to figure this out. Um, I mean most things <laughs> um i guess probably like the biggest thing um that i've gotten excited for release wise most recently um was probably final fantasy 7 remake um just because it it i played the original back when i was like seven eight nine and i played it multiple times and um just to re-enter the Final Fantasy VII world was something I'm really excited for. And I'll probably get even more excited as we get deeper into the story for the parts I'm really excited to see um, in Final Fantasy VII. Um, other than that, I guess... I don't know. In middle school, I was really excited about the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> um I will probably get really, really excited and amped up once Amazon finally releases their Lord of the Rings series. Which probably won't be for a while. Shh. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> you just gotta believe. You just gotta believe. It's coming. Um, One day. And yeah, uh, other than that, um, what, was there a second part of that question, right? Uh something that you've been able to get pumped about with a whole world um, or a large group of people? I have no idea. Um, my interests, <laughs> granted, my interests are so broad. Um, I mean, the election of uh, President Obama. I got pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all I can think of. And what about you? Yeah. Um, 
I, the only thing that comes to mind in terms of like recent stuff being released is um, the news about the Witcher prequel. And I was pretty excited about that when I read about it this morning. Um, but in terms of something I've been able to get excited about with a big group of people, what comes to mind is the Doctor Who 50th anniversary, because I went to see it with a group of friends in theaters and it was basically sold out the place I went and it was super exciting. And that was just something that I was able to bond with people over because it was this big event for the show. So yeah, that's just one thing that's come to mind. It's not recent because most of the things I've been excited about recently it, or would have been were like movie releases like the Black Widow, which have all been postponed because we're in the middle of a pandemic. So <laughs> they're not really happening, but I'm still excited for the movies that will eventually be released one day, maybe. <laughs> so. And Shane, that brings us to you. Yeah. Um, in junior high and high school, I went through this major pirates phase. So I was really excited for Pirates of the Caribbean 4 and like went with a bunch of my friends and dressed up as a pirate to go to it. And then it was just a horrible movie, but. Which Pirates was it? Did you say? Four. Four? Okay. That's what I thought you said. I don't know. I was like, I want to make sure I heard right. <laughs> so I just kind of pretended that that one didn't exist anymore and continued to love the first three but it was fun to get excited about it anyways. And I don't know, as for being pumped with a whole bunch of people, just like any of the cons and stuff that I've been to, um, we had David Tennant and Matt Smith at one a couple of years ago, and that was an exciting panel. So fun fact. Um, we have a con here in Dallas that Matt Smith has canceled on like six years in a row. <laughs> like he's been on the guest list and then like a month before cancels. Yeah, Christopher Eccleston keeps canceling on us. So <laughs> keep trying to get all of the new doctors and I just can't. It's rough. <laughs> Super rough. Mm -hmm. That's why I just collect paraphernalia and screw autographs. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You gotta get those pop figures signed, though. By who? <laughs> and Everyone. where? One. Also, Good question. <laughs> speaking of pop figures, I did not know my Valkyrie pop figure was gonna be a bobblehead. Gotcha. And I'm really hyped that it was. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't put your bobbleheads in your car because the adhesive will melt and the head will fall off. That's, that's definitely inconvenient. Found that out the Life hard way. Tips. <laughs> Life tips from Nick. Happened Not with Nick. baby group. Nikolai. Chris. Life tips from Chris. <laughs> I don't know why I called you Nick there. I had a brain fart. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll hold that against you forever. Great. Good to know. Well, Nick, Lots what do you got for us? <laughs> so I mostly just have news. I didn't, I, I figured we'd have enough with the questions that were here. Um, um, but in video game news, or like, and, and I'm always skeptical of these because Kickstarter video games never seem to go well. Um, but a old series, Silico Den, um, um, officially may have a follow up. Uh, the Ayuden Chronicle um, has been successfully funded on Kickstarter. Um, I think the last Silico Den game came out on PS3. Um, I definitely remember playing it on PS2. I think I played one on PS3. Um, I'm looking it up for you. But all in all, I'm like, I'm temptively excited because I'd like to return to that game. And granted, um, from the looks of their Kickstarter and everything, they are keeping it simple and limited to like a 2D, um, kind of development which does simplify things and makes things a lot easier um but they they've uh 
Um, so the their creative team, though, also does contain. So the original Junko Kawano from Suikoden One and Four. Um, we also get the art director from Castlevania and Suikoden Tactics, um, and some awesome composers. So I mean, the team is looking very promising, and I'm excited to see what comes how this uh comes to fruition. Yeah, this is a game that's like right up my alley if it comes out. Uh, it's like that tactics based that like Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Tactics, all of those style games. Slash JRPG, grind your way yeah. up to be over OP. <laughs> That's my kind of game. Um, also, can we also just take a moment to talk about how advanced Minecraft is anymore? So, in Minecraft now, you can actually run Windows 95. Okay. And play attention. Doom, the Windows 95 Doom, in a Minecraft environment. So you can build a PC, have it boot up Windows 95, and then you can play Doom on that Windows 95 PC. So it's super meta is what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. I love this. I love everything about this. Great. I've never touched Minecraft a day in my life, and that doesn't change anything for me. <laughs> okay. So from a technical standpoint, the reason why this is actually impressive is because, in general, emulating old operating systems is very hard. Because okay. the entire architecture of that operating system is on a completely different structure than our CPUs are modern computers operate on so for instance like windows 95 was like a 16-bit operating system we're at 64 wow. uh, like e like even even just trying to launch 32-bit systems is trouble it's actually why one reason why e in terms of making your systems backwards compatible in terms of like game consoles is as difficult as Sony says. Um, there's a lot of things you can do um, to make it easier, but you, it, you're running a lot of stuff that just takes up a lot of your hardware um, resources. But yeah, random thing, random fact. Fair enough. So that's why this is so impressive, actually, is just in general emulating Windows 95 on a 64-bit system is very niche. The more you know. Yeah. Minecraft would be crazy. Like that's just kind of like one of those like, like Deanna likes Minecraft and watches some some videos and just like the amount of stuff that like you can see people do in those is it's just like, huh, right? Like that's crazy. Um, like people do like the music block thing and like all that kind of stuff. Like there's some really cool stuff that people will do. And I guess that brings us to our last topic for tonight. Um, before we get into our top three, and so. One of the things that I wanted us to do is kind of get to know each other better. And some of this is going to have to do a little bit with like the questions that we had um, when we announced 3.0, but I kind of want us to talk just a little bit more about it. Um, and so we are going to be talking through some sort of like geeky personality traits um, and kind of just like talking about like what they mean to us. If you want to share like an example of like how you see that in your life, um, feel free. And so we're going to be doing our Hogwarts house, our airbending style, then our D&D &D alignment. And so we'll start with Hogwarts house. This is kind of the classic geeky one. Um, and Emma, why don't you go first? We're just doing that this episode. I'm a Ravenclaw. Um, I'm not a big Harry Potter person. So I guess the only way I really see this in existence is the fact that I have a lot of books. Um, I just sort of hoard them and read them and then they collect dust for years on end and I store a lot of random facts in my head and I don't even realize that I know all of the things that I know so yeah I'm a Ravenclaw. Janine what about you? I am a Hufflepuff and Okay, so when I was a Young Life leader, I was hanging out with some teens and one of them brought a friend 
that I'd never met before. And I was just like chatting with him, getting to know him and stuff. And he looks at me, he's like, you're a Hufflepuff, aren't you? <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> so I guess I'm just a Hufflepuff in everything about me. Nice. Called out. <laughs> um as for me i am also a ravenclaw in general um slash i mean uh, the other half of the time i guess like 25 percent of the time i might get gryffindor if i ever take those tests um but i like to consider myself a hufflepuff, hufflepuff at heart <laughs> how do you see your ravenclawness played out I mean, I, I, I'm rereading Lord of the Rings right now. It <laughs> 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 feels like a Ravenclaw, very, a Ravenclaw type thing to do. Um, this past week, I have spent so many hours reading, learn, relearning CSS and HTML code to start revising our website. I think that's a pretty Ravenclaw thing to do. That seems very <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In general, like my in my her, like when I become a hermit and I deep dive into obscure topics, that's that's the Ravenclaw in me for sure. Did you mean hyper focus? Because that's a real thing. I I don't become hyper focused necessarily, <laughs> and I just keep to myself and force myself to, to intake information. Um, I wish I could. I I used to get hyper focused, but I have not had that happen in a long time and then for me i am also ravenclaw uh, and one of the ways that like i see that is kind of like the curiosity aspect of ravenclaws where it's the like oh here's a new thing oh let's look at all the youtube videos and watch all the content and do all this stuff um it's so, like i've mentioned before like i watch like competitive gaming for games i have no interest in playing just because i think it's interesting to learn like the game and the strategy and how all that works um it's so, like that's one for me and then like in like a work standpoint like i'm always want to learn the new thing at work and so i'm like that person that volunteers for like we're gonna pilot this thing like i'm in like sign me up yeah like i just i just want to learn like it's just that curiosity of I want to figure out how this works and like know how it like know how to do my job better because of it. And so that, that's really how I see that in me. And so next we have our bending style from Avatar. And so that me. Yeah. Cuz we're going in the same rotation. So I Side note, I have seen the series, but I saw it like once through and so I'm not well versed in it. So I took the test or one of the various tests and I had told me it was a tie between water and earth. So if I had to pick between those two, I would go with water because I love the ocean. Um, so yeah, I don't know what my advanced bending brouhaha is. Um, but yeah, not a lot of insight when it comes to Avatar on this end. I know no the story, but that's it. <laughs> Janine, what about you? I'm also a waterbender. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, basically what Emma said, but like, I also love the ocean and I'm not close to the ocean. So I have to settle for like lakes and rivers and stuff, but I like those too. And yeah. What about you, Chris? I am an earthbender. I can see that. Mountains and... <laughs> Honestly, like, I'm not gonna lie, I mostly picked earthbending because ultimately my martial art, like, when I did study martial arts, martial arts, I did stent, tend to the styles that are more affiliated with earthbending in the show. Um, also, just more like a sturdy base and like not as fluid. Just yeah. Also that so, <laughs> earthbending because martial arts. <laughs> Woo. 
And then for me, um, I definitely identify with like the the wandering part of like being an airbender. Just like that idea of like, well, like I don't have like the wanderlust kind of thing necessarily, but the idea of like not wanting to settle into like one specific thing. Nomadic. Yeah, almost. like it's like, and I kind of feel that way with my hobbies. Like, where I will very much like pick up a new hobby, get really into it, and then drop it for a new hobby that I'll then get really into. Like, I'm one of those kinds of people. And so, like, that's kind of one of the ways that I see that. Although, like, I say this as I'm wearing like a fire shirt. So, you know, <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, but yeah. And then next we have D&D alignment. And so, and then kind of like as a follow-up question for this, I want to know, like, since we all do some sort of like role-playing games is, do you feel like your characters tend to be the same alignment you are, or do you think that they tend to be different? So, so I have, I've also taken the test for this one because rabbit holes and I have ADD. So give me the internet and you've just lost me for hours. And the test is said that I'm lawful good, which I 95% believe with. I would say that I have, I'm lawful good with some chaotic good tendencies. Um, again, just ADD, like that can, that in my head sort of aligns with chaotic good, just sort of all over the place. Um, and when it comes to role playing, Oftentimes, yes, I do see that in the characters that I play and have, just because it's I'm so new to role playing games that it's since I'm also trying to figure out how the game works, I find it easier to like just stay in the head space of what would I do in this situation and go from there because I'm again new, so I'm still trying to figure out I can't it's harder for me to balance pretending to be like chaotic neutral when I don't even know how the game is played. So at least right now, yes, I do see my D and D alignment showing up a lot in the characters that I play, but I do want to like expand out of that in the future. Janine, what about you? Okay, well, the test said I'm lawful neutral, which I think makes sense, like lawful and like following a code and neutral kind of fluctuating between caring for myself and caring for mm -hmm. others. Makes sense, I guess. Um, as for my characters, I think I used to play mostly like lawful good, neutral good characters currently i think they're more like neutral neutral chaotic neutral the, the futurama thing of like i have no strong feelings either way <laughs> of course that's not what neutral neutral means but like that's just like the thing that comes to mind first fair enough yeah yeah i think a lot of our parties I don't know, usually I've been on like saving the world parties and now I'm in a lot of like, we're in it for ourselves. If other people get helped, I guess that's okay. <laughs> hmm? That sounds about neutral. Hmm. Yeah. I, I would consider myself chaotic good. Actually, probably chaotic neutral. Definitely on the chaotic end. Um, but I, I mean, in terms of like when I do play characters, typically for a one shot, uh, chaotic characters can be harder to play. So I will tend more toward like either true neutral or lawful at times. So not necessarily not to reflect me, but um, more so my chaotic nature wants to manipulate. <laughs> put that lawful character in weird situations to where maybe he won't be so lawful. Yeah. That's my DM goal for anyone that plays a lawful character. 
is to put them into situations where that lawful aspect is very challenged. <laughs> yeah. So for me, like I tend to fluctuate from being like barely lawful good to being like barely chaotic good. Kind of like in that, which I guess kind of like just makes it neutral good is where that ends up. Cause like I very much fall into like the system's great until it's corrupt and then tear down the system. Yeah. Um, so like I very much fall into like that mindset. And so, um, so yeah, so it kind of fluctuates just based on what's going on and like what I personally believe in in that moment um, or believe about the group necessarily or the order. Um, I want to give a shout out to Saving the Games. They have like a 10 part series on alignment in D&D. That's really good. Um, and they kind of look at it with a fake background too. I meant to give them a shout out when we started this one and I forgot. Um, as for me and playing characters, I kind of fall in the same boat as Emma, where like, really, I've only played two characters, or I guess technically three characters. One of them was Ike from Fire Emblem. So I just played what I thought Ike would do. And then one of those was a one shot. And then the one character I have in the campaign that we're currently, I'm currently in on um, Sunday nights. And that character is chaotic good and kind of is just like, it's very like he's very much like the magnification of the chaotic good side of my personality. So like whereas I like I personally might fluctuate more. Like my character is very much just like we're just doing what we got to do to survive and we want to help people, but like we're also going to do the like like the greater good kind of thing of like if what's best for me is that this person who's evil doesn't come back to try to kill us later, like we're going to fight this person. Um, and so that probably like, so we, like he definitely like is more on that chaotic good probably dips down in the chaotic neutral. Um, if we're being honest. Um, but yeah. And so that's our, our like geeky personality traits. And so that brings us to our top three for this week, which is, our top three sitcom duos as we get ready for the first annual The Office, The Battle Royale. Um, and so before we get into our personal ones, we have a handful from our listeners. And so over in Discord, we have Mork and Mindy from the show Mork and Mindy. And this is um, Greg because posted this for his wife. Robin Williams. So, yeah, and this is one that I've just I've never heard of this show, but it looks interesting. And then Greg said for him, Sean and Gus. Yeah. From Psych. Psych. Heck yeah. Over on our Twitter, Justin said um, Leonard and Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. Then we got Troy in a bed from the Infinity Bros. Troy in a bed in the morning. But the Infinity Bros posted that. Um, Sam posted Sean and Gus. I and think Jessica o Johnson also said on Facebook, Troy and Abed. Yep. And then over on our Instagram that we now have, and I forgot to add to the intro. That's my bad. Um, we have Eric Steven says Troy and Abed, as well as Bugs and Daffy. And then we have um, Marvin says Keenan and Kel, Ron Swanson, and Leslie Nope, or Troy and Abed. So, Troy and Abed in the morning. So shout out to that. So with this, um, during our top threes, we can define favorite duo however you want. Um, and we'll, we'll do our like rotation through. So um, we'll each share one and then we'll just like kind of cycle through them that way. Um, and so... Emma. Before we do that, though, my friend sent me a bunch oh, as well. Go for it. Okay. So basically, after our last episode aired, my friend immediately messaged me and he's like, are you going to be on the next one? Because I have so many sitcom duos. <laughs> so he messaged me uh, Corner Gas, Brent and Lacey. Um, that is a Canadian show. If Never you heard, heard of it. it. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to have the diversity because how do we watch Canadian shows in in the U.S., is there? I don't know where you would find Corner Gas. I mean, Express VPN sponsor us. 
I'll I could see use if it. I can find something because corner <laughs> gas is so funny. It's like it takes place in this random little prairie town, and there's like five buildings in the whole town, and it's just hilarious. Um, Kate, his other couples, How I Met Your Mother, Lily and Marshall are the best. Friends, Joey and Phoebe are the best couple. Uh, the Office, Jim and Pam, Jim and Dwight, Dwight and Michael, all of them were so good. Uh, Kim's Convenience, which is another Canadian show. I love Kim's is... Convenience, though. That's on Netflix. So. <laughs> I just started watching it. Um, he said he's waiting for Janet and Gerald to get together. Uh, new Girl, Jessica and Nick were so wonderful. And Community, Troy and Abed in the morning. They're my favorite. Classic. They, they, they were just, they because they are, they're a different dynamic than your standard, you know, just in general. Troy and Abed's personalities in that show are just different in general. And I love them. They're my favorite. They're lovely. And that last season just wasn't the same. Emma, why don't you start us off with your top three? Great. All three or just one? Just one. We'll, we'll, we'll Great. cycle around. So technically in my head, I don't consider it a sitcom, but I had to pick John and Sherlock from Sherlock <laughs> because it's just a duo that I really enjoy. So that's one. <laughs> Shanine? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. I love Michael and Pam in the office. They're just, I just love how in the beginning, Pam basically just can't stand Michael as a boss or a human. And, but they just have the most beautiful friendship by the end of it. Like he supports her art and she supports his crazy business decisions and they just understand each other so well and and I cry every time he leaves at the airport mm -hmm. every time good one I tried to keep mine more obscure so I didn't have any you? overlap really yeah. I never would have guessed Chris I mean, they're not necessarily obscure, but ones that maybe you've forgotten about. Like Eric Matthews and Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. Mr. Feeney. <laughs> because I honestly, you know, Mr. Feeney and is, wouldn't have been brought out like as, as cool of a teacher or character if it wasn't for Eric's shenanigans. Um, or just standing outside his, in, and his Feeney call. Um, so by far the best duo in Boy Meets World. That's a good one. And the best callbacks in Girl Meets World. So for me, I tried to limit myself to one duo per show. Like that was my rule because I basically just didn't want to do all the office people. <laughs> and so... That's um, right. Someone already listed all of them. So Yes, basically. <laughs> and so... So my first one, I want to give New Girl a shout out because it doesn't get enough love. So basically everyone with Jess is a great duo, mm -hmm. but but not doing the cop out, Winston and Allie. Like I wanted an actual, at least like one actual couple and I love their dynamic. Like I, I love like as a character, Winston's probably my favorite character in New Girl. Um, and I just like, I love seeing like their relationship grow as they like open up to each other and get to know each other better. Um, so shout out to Winston and Ab Abby, or Winston and Allie. There we go. Knew it. I was waiting for a new girl reference. <laughs> Had to be there. <laughs> I knew it was going to be camera. <laughs> <laughs> so my next one, I went for Ron and Leslie from Parks and Rec, just because it's an awesome, like, friendship between them. Like, Ron is so grumpy and Leslie's, like, over the top ecstatic and it's just so completely opposite, but it works. And Ron just puts up with Leslie's ridiculousness and while well, he doesn't put up with anyone else's stupidness. So, yeah.
Okay, unlike Cameron, I did want to do all of mine from the <laughs> office. So, um, my next one is Dwight and Pam. Is it just everyone They're... and Pam? Is that all your top three is right it... there? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> but again, such a surprising friendship um, that you first see really develop when Dwight has a concussion. And I don't know. And I think one of my favorite moments with them is when Michael is lost and they're out looking for him. And Pam calls Dwight to see like if they found him yet. She's like, oh, while you're out, can you pick up these things? And Dwight's like, we're doing way more important stuff. And she's like, okay, well, I just thought since you were out. And he's like, shut up, Pam. I'm obviously going to get that stuff for you. And I'm like, aw, who cares? <laughs> My <laughs> next would have to be, we'll go, just because I grew up on this show at my grandma's house, um, we're going to go Tim Taylor and Al Borland from Home Improvement. Oh, good choice. Nice. And just, they're <laughs> such a good duo. Like, like, honestly, I could just watch the 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 fake TV show. I can just watch. And I'd probably be okay with that. Like, all the everything else that happens is just okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Al Borland just making keeping tim alive basically yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay so i was gonna say this for last but if shanine is doing all the office ones i gotta get mine in now so it doesn't get taken um and, that, and that's the iconic duo of jim and dwight um yeah. that very much like as much as like the jim pam relationships like the heart of the show like Jim and Dwight are very much like they have so many great comedic moments. Um, I love the one that was like in our post about this, where Dwight is the is in charge of the office, and they're like they have the sign that says six days since last nonsense," and they erase it and change. Like I just love like everything about their relationship, like kind of almost like in, in like a similar way to the, the Dwight and Pam relationship. Like I like that. Jim and Dwight have this very much like this rivalry. They they don't get along, but they are also always there for each other. And like it like culminates in like Dwight even asking Jim to be um, his best man at his wedding. Like and just like just seeing that like dynamic between the two of them played out. Like of course, and then also like the pranks and you know all that stuff. Um, like my like I just I love the one where they have been told they can't prank each other or they'll lose their bonuses. And like Jim loudly reads his credit card number. Then Dwight uses it to send flowers to Pam. Like it's just so good. And I, I just loves everything about their relationship. So Jim and Dwight. Amazing. And for my last totally not office related is cat and dog from Nickelodeon's cat dog. Or dog cat, depending on who you would like to ask. <laughs> it's a total callback to my childhood, at least, because it's literally a cat on one end and a dog on the other end, as if they were the same animal. And it's completely stupid, and they have exactly what you would expect a cat and a dog to have as a relationship or a friendship, because the dog's, like, completely, like, it's not really dumb or stupid, but just, like, happy about everything and the cat is just fed up with everything so it's, they just drag each other around and it's funny so mm -hmm. cat dog is a show that i missed because like i was watching like cartoon network not nickelodeon like, yeah and it's one of those sh shows like in hindsight i think i would have really liked but i just didn't get into it i really liked it as a kid i didn't watch it a whole lot but it always made me laugh. Okay, for my final office duo. <laughs> I have Michael and Holly. They um, were on my short list. They're just, they're so good. And like me and my husband have watched through the show so many times together. And it starts out, you know, we're like, oh, we're such a Jim and Pam. 
because you know like they're the couple and they're so sweet together and then we're watching the show we're like maybe we're Dwight and Angela (laughs) and then (laughs) we reached a point I wish I could remember what exactly the thing was that happened between Michael and Holly but we looked at each other we're like oh man we're so Michael and Holly aren't we (laughs) so I don't know they just are one of the best couples in the show and they just get each other's humor and they're just perfect for each other I love them they were on my short list until like I decided I only wanted to do one per show (laughs) <laughs> like they were they were like because like i once like i said i wanted to have a couple which in, like ended up being less than an alley but like like um michael and holly were originally going to be the couple on my list mm-hmm. see i had like six couples from the office and two from two other shows and i'm like i could use those other two or i could just do all the office should have used the other two <laughs> save all that office yeah. content for the annual the first annual the office the battle royale yeah were y'all gang up on me for my controversial opinion (laughs) discuss no just (laughs) (laughs) number one how dare you (laughs) uh i'm a human being with my own opinion (laughs) touche you win this round (laughs) i i so my last one's hard because I want to throw these both out there. So I'm I'm going to give a shout out to Will and Carlton from Fresh Prince because great show for one. And they are complete opposites. Height, personalities, background <laughs> in general. Um, but they make each other better. Um, but for my so but for my ultimate final, um, and my number one duo is Chuck and Morgan from Chuck. <laughs> And I'm surprised no one threw it out there, but those two friends are just where it's at. Also, how they are alive throughout the series, very questionable. (laughs) Yeah. Like, the way they get out of situations, specifically Morgan gets out of situations, (laughs) is very impressive. And, yeah. Yeah. In general, like I, I, I love that series too. So, friend goals. Also, that the episodes where Morgan becomes like the assistant manager. <laughs> Gold. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. That's all. It's my duos. So my last one, I cannot believe I completely forgot about until we were like going through listener ones, but it wasn't one that was said. But I just for some reason forgot it. And that's Tom and Donna from Parks and Rec. Mm. Like, just their friendship is, like, it's just goals. Like, I love the, like, treat yourself thing. I love their, like, both of their, like, we don't necessarily want to work hard, but we want to make sure the job gets done kind of thing. Um, And I love that mindset. I love how much they support each other. Like, especially as, like, the series goes and they move on to other things. And so I just love like seeing that relationship as like as a moment where they both both Tom and Donna and that relationship get to be exactly who they are. Like there, there's no walls, there's no borders. It is just them being them. And I love I think that's such a great example. Um, also shout out to like a really close male and female friend that aren't like it's not a romantic relationship. So shout out to that as well we've had some other ones of those on our list but like i think that from like a writing standpoint like that's almost always the default that people go to none of mine were romantic that's what i'm saying saying. but like i think that that's something that's always really good to see in media and so shout out to the shows that write those relationships really well so that wraps up this top three next week Emma is going to be bringing our top three. And what is it for next week? Woo! Your favorite star constellations and or associated stories or myths that go with constellations. So it can either be stories that 
are attached to constellations or just your favorite constellations if you don't know the myths behind them. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna choose all the wrong ones. I feel like <laughs> okay. I feel whatever like the wrong ones are, I'm gonna choose it. Mine are just gonna be like obscure stories my sister told me when I was a kid. <laughs> that counts too. <laughs> that are in no way related to anything. That's okay. Most of the constellation stories don't make any sense anyway. So <laughs> I'm also gonna make up a constellation. <laughs> cool. And my own myth. Mm -hmm. Your own myth. I'm gonna do two truths and a lie for this one. I'm gonna see if you could pick out which one I made up, <laughs> which one <laughs> and which other two are actually from history. Duly noted. Plot twist, Chris accidentally picks one, like all three that actually exist. Yeah. Right. And uh, like I like <laughs> literally one just like, well, that's actually true. I don't know where you heard that, but like I just made it up, but it turns out that yeah, if you Google that, that's real. <laughs> Oops. So that wraps up our show for this week. Be sure to check back next next week as we do our discussion and of course do our top three star constellations and myths. You can find us on our social media, which is one geek 411 on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and our PlayStation community. And of course, you can send us an email at 1SCGeek411 at gmail.com. You can rate and subscribe on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, as well as check out our show notes over on our website, which is onegeek411.com, where you can find um, our sister podcast, Faith, Trust, and Pixie Dust. Um, where they discuss all things Disney. And then if you want to chat with us, you can do that at our personal social medias. Mine is Humar Whittle. Mine is I am not prepared with an I. On Twitter, on at the Hoot and Howl and Instagram, Hoot and Howl Tales, T-A-L-E-S. And I'm not so foreign. And I'm realizing I misspelled not so foreign in the command. So that's my bad. I will fix that. Oops. <laughs> so Oops. I before E, except for all the time that it's not. Except for after numbers. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's been a great week. I love you. Wash your hands. You don't know till you know. You know. I got nothing this time. <laughs> And if you're here in chat, um, we'll hang out and chat for a little bit um, before we officially sign off. But Also, for those who are currently listening to our audio format or our podcast, if there are any hiccups, I do apologize. This is brand new, and hopefully we'll fix, out, fix all the kinks in the future. I know Comics in the Cross was hyping chuck so and yep. apparently he has indicated it is on prime so i know what i'm doing this week yep yeah greg pointed <laughs> out it is on prime so shout out to that so chuck is a show i need to go back and rewatch. like i remember really enjoying it but i've only seen it once like it's one of those shows that i only watched through once and then was like okay i i i love all the dynamics in that captain awesome uh, and Ellie and everyone although all the love interests for Chuck are also very interesting and I was very disappointed with the sandwich lady that just disappeared also don't at me but Jim and Karen MVPs on the office and then Ted and Victoria from How I Met Your Mother so Right. Don't at me. <laughs> Victoria at is him. perfect for Ted. Yeah. My OTP from How I Met Your Mother is Robin and Barney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought they did them dirty. Like I just, I loved them so much. They're technically like the most compatible. <laughs> so I have a copy of the second draft of the, the pilot episode for How I Met Your Mother that my mom got me a couple of years ago. <laughs> and it's it's super hype. And so that's that awesome. So cool. 
And so like, I, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's like a writer's copy that they actually like use for like the read throughs or anything, but it's like, it's really interesting to go and look at like what got caught from the ep- cut from the episode. And like how a lot of it was probably a really good idea. Like apparently Marshall was really concerned he had cancer in the first episode. And it's like, that's a bold place to go on a comedy. Like especially episode one. Yeah. Yeah. This is part of the pilot. Yeah. And so like, yeah. Hmm. Oh man. Where we start smoke us. Is this some show I want to go back? I mean, I always want to go back and rewatch Parks and Rec. That's like just kind of my life. We just rewatched The Office not too long ago. But I think we're I think we're doing How I Met Your Mother next. That's going to be our next next watch through. Once we finish um, Doctor Who. Woo! How far are you? That's it. We just met the Master. Which I version ask of like, the I, master? So, and I don't know what that means. The very first time in like when um, David Tent like meets him. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So we just finished that episode like before podcast started. So. Comics and the Cross has not seen How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> so no, don't watch the last season. Or okay, buy I've it on DVD my- so you could watch the alternate ending. Yeah. I've only seen like three episodes, so you're not alone. So it's it, not it, good we, we can, necessarily. Yeah, this I can mean, be like part wonderful. of a bigger discussion. But it's always really interesting to see how like certain sitcoms have handled like if you look at their seasons like as a whole, like like what they were and what changed and all that kind of stuff. Whereas like how I met your mother like has like a pretty good build and then like crashes in the last season. But then you have like Parks and Rec that is kind of just like consistent, like it, it's it's rough to start with, but then just kind of stabilizes at good. And like, and then you have stuff like The Office with super high highs and then like super low lows. <laughs> At least it to me. But what you got, Amy? I just thought of another t- duo. Um... Oh, jeez. Um, Eleanor and Chidi from The Good Place. Oh, that is a good one. Well, any combination from The Good Place, but yeah. oh, that show is so good. I yeah. thought I think Eleanor and Michael have the best chemistry in that. That yeah, those that duo right there. Yeah, that show is so good. I'm getting a spam call. That might be like one of the perfect, like most perfect shows out there. Yeah. Like they told their story, stuck the landing and left. Like that's the. They didn't force past the ending. I haven't seen the last season yet. It's so good. It's, It's good. It's totally worth it. It's a good closure. Yeah. Yeah. And the season well. Lot to think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thematically. Oh, it's so good. That's a show I'd really like to see them do like a reunion, something of. Yeah. Like I don't know like how that would like fit in. Um, but oh, it's so good. Totally worth the time, too. It's not crazy watch. long. It's only what three yeah. seasons, four seasons. Four. I said I want to say four. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in FX. They're like, and they're they're not even hour long episodes, were they? Right. Mm-mm. Like yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're like or whatever. They're standard yeah. half hour, twenty or you know, with commercials on TV. Oh man, I love sitcoms so much. I don't watch nearly enough of them. I guess I say I love sitcoms, and I have like three or four that I watch on rotation. all the time, just rewatch. Like, <laughs> that's like the... yeah. <laughs> so like, it's less of a thing now. But like when I lived by myself, like and it's kind of a thing now because I work from home. But like like when I lived by myself and I just needed something on all the time because the quiet just like gets me. Um, and so, like, yeah, I, w- I was very much, like, the, the millennial that'll, like, put the office on in the background while you're doing whatever. 
And so it's like, I wouldn't even be sitting like looking at the TV and I'd have like the office parks and rec, how I met your mother kind of just like running on loop. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, so I think I did like in the four years I was in Connecticut, I think I, did, I marathoned each of those shows three times. Dang. And so like kind of, and like marathoned in the sense of that, like I, I would have right. it on while I was doing stuff, but. Love those shows. I put on obscure things anymore, like Guns of Kibo. <laughs> <laughs> that is an obscure movie. I like obscure movies like Iron Man Three. Totally obscure, right? Totally obscure. <laughs> oh man. Um. And what is it? Comics and Across says that um, talking about Good Place. It sounds like it's on his watch list because he hasn't seen that one either. It's a good show. I recommend it. Okay, so Homer, also, Emma, play Comics Final Fantasy Cross, VII I Remake. Agree. Yes, Shanine, I got to finish watch the Watch final season of good, The Good Place. Cameron, <laughs> I don't know if we have homework for you. <laughs> I don't know. Is the final season on Netflix yet? I think so. I'm pretty sure that's where I may have watched it. Is it on Netflix in Canada? That, no, I, I have no way of knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Dunno, there's, can't help there, you there. There's literally no way of knowing. <laughs> These are the problems I have. Oh, also, big shout out, Umbrella Academy Season 2 comes out Friday. Uh, no, Season 4 is not on Netflix. At least in the U.S. <laughs> Shanine's like, we no, had it for in years. In <laughs> Canada. Where did I watch it then? Hulu? Hulu? I think I watched it on Hulu. Yeah. That could have been where you watched it since I watched on your Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> I probably still need to just like cancel all my services and then set them up under the first key <laughs> email. And that way you guys just have access to everything. Oh, Cameron, you can we can assign you an anime. Um Q, still just watch Q. always just watch, watch Haikyuu Crunchyroll you have my Crunchyroll <laughs> <laughs> do I? you should I don't think I ever logged off it when I was at your place if not I'll send it to you okay is it dubbed? I'm a heathen you're not a heathen. You just watch things in the background. Also, Nightbot just got super upset at Comics on the Cross, so we're going to need to tweak some settings. <laughs> oh, for going woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Stop spamming caps. <laughs> this is one word. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna disable the excessive caps thing. <laughs> And, and while we're here, I think we can disable excessive emotes. So, you know. That's my bad. Okay, it is not dubbed, at least not on Crunchyroll. Okay. Um, I'll find you a good dubbed anime. I need to get a, look up... What was the name of the book, Shanine, that you had posted about? Um, the one, like, I say this, but there was one that, like, it was... Uh... What, plugged in? Yes, that one. Okay. Plugged in by Daniel Actually, Strange. Out of my homework for all three of you. <laughs> Your lie in April. That's been on my list for Your so lie long. In April? Your lie in April. Lie is in L I E? Yes. Great. It's on my list. I just haven't done it yet. Do where where is that at for listeners and Cameron? Uh, Your lie is actually on Netflix. That's <laughs> Greg says, no, that is mean. So good, but still, Chris. <laughs> it's true. I am mean, but so good. It's so good. I watch it when we have a lot of rain. Ooh. 
full, I mean, okay, uh, so racial tension says Full Metal Alchemist should be at the top of that list, Janine. Also, you need to finish My Hero. Yes, honey. <laughs> Is that your husband? Is that yeah. <laughs> I mean, both, yes. Full Metal Alchemist is also phenomenal. Also, pretty easy to watch. It's quick. Well, both. Like, everything I'm recommending right now, single season. Um, and My Hero. Yeah. I need to finish yeah. the last season of My Hero. I think we're almost done. My Back Hero up. Academia. And then uh, we also have, oh, Violet Evergarden and A Silent Voice. Violet Evergarden is phenomenal. Also Netflix. Um, I love Violet Evergarden gorgeous and just so well animated everything so about that true. that one is phenomenal um so racial tension also says then dragon ball z z <laughs> so, chris do you remember when we watched dragon ball super or not super dragon ball um what did we watch we marathoned something gt and gt that's what it was which is like the worst dragon ball it's not but even like, canon. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those like it's it's so bad it's not canon. Yes, it was it was mostly like it it was filling the place of Dragon Ball for me, and it is not good, but it was entertaining for sure <laughs> because it's so bad. Welcome, City on a Hill. Also, I'll be on their podcast on Thursday. Forgot to mention that in the show. That's my bad. I think we're missing a lot of things. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Editing is going to be fun this week. Uh-huh. Also, Chris, confession time. Okay. I, I forgot to do a local recording. Oh, no. We'll make it work. I'm going to have to cut out some... It might actually end up being a short episode because of what I have to cut out. Because when we cut out there, if if it was my internet connection that was unstable, it probably didn't pick up all of your audio during that period on the Zoom. So we will see what happens. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting week. But that's what happens when you launch 3.0. You get bugs. You just got to believe. As mm -hmm. Parappa the Rapper once taught me. Parappa the Rapper. Parappa the Rapper. played, but he's in PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale, and so you know, gotta believe. Oh man. Okay, it's that time. I think I need to head to bed. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Chat, you've been amazing. Chris, great job. Really like the. Um, Screen thing. Overlay. Overlay. Thank you. <laughs> like add that to the like the really straightforward words I forgot this week. But or this episode. But it happens. Well, thanks for jumping on those City on a Hill. Even if it's just for the tail end, we're happy you were able to. Um, but we'll be back next week. And also you can always listen to the recording. I, I was about to start the whole like plug i'm like do i need to do that <laughs> not really i'm not recording so <laughs> also i think i forgot to record to post to youtube so that'll come next week <laughs> we're learning it happens we're getting there all right well and everyone has the, their homework and the vod should stay up on twitch for a while i think i got that setting going okay perfect so it should be there dot 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 Oh, Perfect. Comic says we can upload to YouTube straight from Twitch. Good. Because I don't know how this works. But sounds good. I know my CPU got pretty hot earlier. And then died right back down. But that's probably all the Chrome tabs more than anything. <laughs> all right. Good night, everyone. Have a good one. Night. Catch y'all later. Good night.